Hey, it's Ben here, and here in this tutorial, we're going to have a look at how we add dotted lines for our row or column strokes in Adobe InDesign. So we're going to dive right in here. And before we get going, we're going to just go to Window, Workspace, and we're going to jump to the Essentials view. And we're also going to do Window, Workspace, and Reset Essentials. Now, that will just mean that we're all looking at the same layout of Adobe InDesign. So the first thing we're going to do is come to our Type tool across in our toolbar on the left here and we are going to stretch out a type box. We need to have a type box in order to place that table when we're working in Adobe InDesign. So once we've got that set up, we can see our flashing cursor up at the top left here. We're going to go to Table and Insert Table. And I've got a table dimensions of eight rows and eight columns, which is perfect. We'll click OK. And then just from the get-go, we're going to stretch this out just so we have some slightly bigger rows. And I'm going to select all this and right click and we're going to go to distribute rows evenly so we've got a nice distributed set of rows in our table here so with our cursor flashing anywhere in our table we can now come to table and table options and it's in this table setup that we can do the easiest kind of management of those row strokes or column strokes and so make them into dotted lines so essentially here we have our column strokes which is the first one we'll look at we're going to flip this alternating pattern to every other column. And essentially, the main area where we have to modify is the stroke weight and the stroke type here. So if we change the stroke type to dotted, you'll see if we check preview at the bottom left here, our strokes will go to a dotted line. So what you'll see in InDesign um, is we get some little doubling up of those circles close to that row stroke. So now we may not want that now, a couple of different ways of dealing with that or minimizing that is firstly to reduce the weight of our strokes. Once we get down to one point, then you really don't notice the doubling up as much. But when we get those bigger dots between our column strokes, then we have to kind of think a bit more creatively about it. So I'm gonna leave my weight at two points here, and I'm gonna increase the weight of my alternating strokes to two points. We'll set this to dotted as well. And you can see we've got the two kinds of dots. We've got our dotted stroke and our Japanese dots, and they'll both do something slightly different. So we'll just stick with the dotted lines at the moment. And what we're gonna do here is just come to our row strokes, and we're gonna turn on that every other stroke alternating pattern as well. So you can see really clearly that doubling up of that stroke, which is not that attractive. And, and the one way that I found that you can actually deal with this is by reducing the tint of that row stroke to zero and then using the weight of that stroke to actually move those lines apart. So we can increase the, the weight of that stroke and you can see these strokes here, all these dots are nice and spaced out now. So if we do the same here, we'll reduce this to zero and then we'll increase the stroke here to three and you'll see we now get that nicely kind of spaced out dot. Now it's a little bit of a work around this. Obviously we don't have the row strokes there anymore. If we did want those row strokes, then we are gonna get that little bit of doubling up. So when I add my dotted line here and increase the tint back up to 100, we are gonna get that doubling up of those dots around that point, which then starts to work once you kind of get those dots working together. So you can see we've got a two point dot and a two point dot. And now with just dotted lines, on our column and row strokes, it starts to work a bit better. So a couple of different approaches to getting those row strokes and dotted lines to kind of work together. So if we bring the tint back up here, then with this dotted line, you can see if we make this a regular solid line, we get again that doubling up of that dot by the stroke there. So I'm gonna change this back to a dotted line so with dotted lines throughout the entire table, then we don't get that strange doubling up that we get when we're trying to use a mixture of dotted and solid lines. So you'll have to play around with those. Um, but you can see when we're working in here, we're able to use some of these tools to work around those strange little quirks of Adobe InDesign. So that's how to add dotted lines to your columns and also to your row strokes. How to get around some of the strange spacing that you sometimes get with the different types of lines that you're using. And there's a couple of other things we can change in the column strokes as well. So obviously we can change these to our Japanese dots, which we looked at before. Um, so it's kind of slightly more tightly packed dots and we may need to come back to our row strokes and just drop down uh, the gap here just to get those nice and evenly spaced out. 
Um, and then we can also change the color of our dots as well. So we can choose from the swatches that we have available. So if we want to change our dots to different colors, we'll need to add a new swatch. If we double click into our type tool on the left here, we can select a color and we can pick from our color picker here, we can modify what we're changing in this slider. So let's go for a nice green here. You can see when I'm moving my pointer around here, it's actually going to add an HSB swatch because, or hue saturation and brightness swatch because I've clicked in here. To make sure it adds a CMYK swatch, I'm just going to click back in the C here and add that to my swatches. And now if we go to Window, Color and Swatches, then we'll see that new green that we've added there. If we come back in to our table options now, then you'll see underneath our column strokes, we have that new green listed down here at the bottom. So if you've got specific colors that you need to use for your kind of corporate identity or anything like that, then you can add them if you have the CMYK colors and match your color settings. Let's click OK here. So you can see we have added our table. We've created those dotted lines. We've dealt with any kind of spacing issues that might pop up if we're using a mixture of the column strokes but without row strokes. You can also as well if we double click in here one more time and we go to window styles we can come to table styles and if we click plus here we'll call this dotted columns and so now we've got our basic table but we can apply that dotted columns style to our other tables as well. So as well as paragraph styles and character styles that you can use in Adobe InDesign, you can also save a table style as well, which can contain all that formatting that you take your time to set up. So it's worth going through, setting it up properly, making some styles that you can use and reuse, and also modify throughout your entire document. It's gonna make working in InDesign a lot easier in the long run. So hopefully this is useful. If you have any questions about Adobe InDesign, Adobe Photoshop, then do leave a comment below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.